Good day grade lemons. welcome to week 15. In the next couple of weeks we're going to be looking at ideal gases and their thermal properties. In this first lesson what we're going to do is we're just going to look at basic properties of gases and then we're going to look at the kinetic theory of gases. So let's get started. Gas laws. Okay, let's start looking at properties of gases, and this is stuff you know from junior chemistry. The first one is that gases have low densities. You remember the old model, you've got your solid here where the particles are close together, they're strongly bound together. You've got liquids where they're only just touching and they're continually changing partners and moving around and they've got quite a bit of kinetic energy. To your gas model here where the particles separate or the atoms separate apart or the molecules and they move around. They've got lots of energy and that's indicated here by the little whizzy tail things. But they're moving around. They're as far apart from each other as they can be. And this means it's got a low density compared to your liquid and your solid. Gases fill any container completely and uniformly. Here we have the model again. A solid will sit in a square by itself. This is an actual correct drawing because they should be attached to one another. A liquid here will fill up the shape of its container. Um, just at the bottom though with gravity, whereas a gas will take over the whole container completely and uniformly. So it spreads out evenly. Gases are compressible. By compressible means that we can make them into a smaller volume because they are so far apart from each other and they are so dense. This is a plunger here. If I push down on this plunger, I can decrease the volume. Thus it means that it is compressible. Compare that to water, I'm unable to press the plunger down very far at all. I can push them together a little bit, but not far at all. And of course, the solid's not going to be compressible at all. And you'll see lots and lots and lots of gases in gas tanks, and they're under high pressure. They're compressed gases. Gases exert a uniform pressure on the inner surfaces of a container. And I've put a picture of a balloon here. A balloon, when you touch it, has the same firmness on each side. You don't have one side here that's really quite firm and the other side that's quite um, flaccid or, or weak or bendy. Okay? It's the same firmness around the outside and that's because the gases on the inside are exerting a uniform pressure on all of the inner surfaces of a container. And gases diffuse or mix easily and quickly. And you can see here, out of this bottle, this is a perfume or a gas of some description. I like to use perfume. If you spray perfume in the corner of the room, after about five or ten minutes, the perfume molecules will have diffused evenly around the room. It's a random motion, okay, but they will diffuse easily and very, very quickly. And you can see here that that's happening. Okay, so summary of a property of gases. They've got low densities. They will fill any container completely and uniformly. They're compressible. Um, and they exert a uniform pressure on the inner surfaces of the container. And they will diffuse mix um, easily and quickly. The kinetic theory of gases is a model that the scientists have come up with to explain gases' behaviour or gases' properties that we've just discussed. It's developed for a fictional ideal gas. Nothing in life is ideal, but um, this model is based on an ideal gas. And an ideal gas is one that obeys a simple mathematical relationship between the conditions of temperature, volume and pressure under which each is stored. All gases approach the behaviour of an ideal gas as long as moderate conditions of temperature and pressure are maintained. So this kinetic theory that we're going to be discussing in the next couple of slides is trying to explain why gases behave. And although the fictional gas doesn't exist because there is no ideal gas, um, most gases come pretty close. So the first one is that gases are made up of particles moving constantly and at random. And if you have a look here and follow any of these particles, there is no pattern to it. Okay? They're colliding with one another. They're colliding with the size of the container. And you can see at any point in time, all the red ones are in this point. Now they're spread out quite evenly. 
They're moving constantly and at random. The higher the temperature, the faster the particles move. And that's because they've got increased kinetic energy. Okay, so I've got this little simulation going on here. So I'll pump some gas into my container. And there's my gas particles. Okay, and it's moving around there. So it's at 300 degrees Kelvin. Now we're going to talk about degrees Kelvin later, but that is equal to 27 degrees Celsius. So just over room temperature. What happens when I add heat, which I'm going to do here, you'll see the fire come up. What happens to the movement of these particles? They start to move more quickly, faster and faster and faster and faster. And that's because I'm adding energy into the system. If I remove energy, there's some ice blocks popped up underneath, you'll see them slow right down. And I'll bring it right back down to nearly zero degrees and you'll see what happens. Moving very slowly now. Okay, we're below zero degrees now. You'll see that they're moving slowly. So heat does affect these particles. Or there are zero forces of attraction and repulsion between the gas particles, practically. And again, because this is based on an ideal gas, we say that there are zero forces of attraction. So when they hit each other, there's no attraction, no repulsion. They just bounce off each other. And gas particles are very far apart, and the volume of the particles is very small compared to the volume that the gas occupies. Here we can see the plunger that I showed you earlier, and here you can actually see the plunger being pushed down. So the volume of the actual gas particles is a lot less than the volume that it, the whole gas actually occupies. You can see here, it's occupying this much volume. You could push this down even further. Gas particles collide with each other and the walls of their container exerting pressure. So they're colliding with each other and they're colliding with the walls of the container to exert that pressure, that uniform pressure on the outside of the container. Okay, these collisions are perfectly elastic. So no kinetic energy is lost when they collide. Right, grade 11s, I hope that you now know and understand the properties of gases and also the basic theory, kinetic theory of gases. We are going to go into more detail and we're going to go and use these, this, these properties of gases to learn and understand the different gas laws. And then we're going to go and look at the difference between an ideal gas and a real gas. But at the moment, what I need you to do is make sure you know the properties of gases and this basic kinetic theory of gases. Have a great day.